Right now, World of Warcraft has more players than it did in Legion. Dragonflight has offered more content than ever before, while fixing some of the biggest issues from previous expansions. But if WoW is doing so well, why does PvP suddenly feel so dead? Of course, the player base is now fractured, more than ever. But you could join a solo shuffle queue right now and watch this entire video before getting a pop. And even if you're an experienced player, Arena can feel overwhelming. We can't even imagine what it feels like to be a new player in 2024. Add-ons have become part of the metagame itself, and classes now have more damage, mobility, and micro CC than any other point in WoW's history. How did this happen? And more importantly, what can we do to fix it? This video is going to focus on Solo Shuffle, which has become the most popular PvP mode by far, but not without a few consequences. From class balance to queue times, incentives, and more, Solo Shuffle might have changed PvP forever, and some players are scared for the future. But we think there are a few simple solutions that already exist in the game itself that could make PvP flourish in the war within. So join us as we take a deeper dive into class design in Dragonflight and some of the ways PvP could be improved for the future. Everywhere you look, you will see one basic complaint about PvP. Arena is too overwhelming, which makes add-ons practically required. Oh yeah, and queue times are long, but more on that later. Anyway, let's be honest, Arena does feel hard these days, and it's hard to pinpoint why. But add-ons have become one solution. This is what Seedoo's UI looked like during Warlords of Draenor. And this is what his UI looks like now. It seems like half of his screen is covered with weak auras, cooldown trackers, nameplates, and more. Without a doubt, add-ons have become infinitely more complex in the past three expansions, turning a game that is supposed to feel alive and immersive into your grandma's Internet Explorer back in 2007. Solo Shuffle is just one reason why UIs got to this point. Without communication, you need a million different alerts letting you know what's going on. But we think the issue is multiple layers deep. The problem isn't Solo Shuffle alone, but also class design, and more specifically, power creep. As WoW gets older and more complex, classes get updated and start to become way more complicated every single expansion. This isn't just unique to WoW, and happens in almost every single game. PvP has seen power creep in multiple places, and mobility is the most obvious. Ever since the introduction of Demon Hunters in Legion, there has been an arms race in the way characters move. This same expansion is when Paladins would get Divine Steed, and some melee would even get extended range on their attacks. Fast forward to Dragonflight, and a spec like Outlaw Rogue has Shadow Step, Grappling Hook, Sprint with 100% move speed, 3 extra yards on every attack, and even an attack that charges them to their target. The best part? Almost all of this can have its cooldown lowered just by spending combo points. In fact, mobility is so ridiculous that a simple macro can make it look like rogues are cheating. Just watch this player after they Shadow Step Venruki. In case you missed it, here it is again. The rogue kicks and then instantly hooks back, having nearly 100% uptime while landing CC. Next expansion, Death Knights will be getting their own version of Divine Steed, allowing them to mount in combat. Right now, melee is winning the race, but we've seen glimpses of what can happen when casters get their own power creep. But why should you care about character movement? As Core 8 Gaming pointed out, any buff to mobility is a buff to the entire toolkit. It means doing better damage since you have an easier time sticking on target, and this even applies to healers. You will do more healing if you have more movement. Being faster means it's easier to cross the map and even avoid CC. Obviously, moving faster is also a buff to survivability because it's harder to actually get hit. If you are a new player trying to pick up a caster, the melee mobility creep is going to be a nightmare. It will feel like you never have the chance to actually get away. Even if you manage to get a few seconds of breathing room, it probably won't last for long, and now you need to deal with the next power creep. Micro CC. This is something many players misunderstand. Micro CC is not Polymorph, Cyclone, Sap, or even Hammer of Justice. No, we're talking about something else. Micro CC is the smaller, shorter CC that is just there to add more disruption. It's not Sap, but Gouge. It's not the 6 second freezing trap, no, that's the CC. The micro CC is the 3 second silence from Spider Venom. It's the fact that even if a monk misses their kick, they can still ring a piece to stop a cast. The metagame in 2024 is dictated by smaller micro disruptions in gameplay. Everyone's goal in Arena is to make sure the enemy team can't control their character. And it's gotten to the point where even a spell like Intimidating Shout was used as a stun effect, with Absturge getting controlled for almost 3 seconds by a fear while getting trained, eventually leading to elimination from the AWC. Before the talent tree revamp, many CC spells used to share talent slots, 
but now many of these choices are available all at once. In Dragonflight, Micro CC is what wins games. You're never 3 2 one your spells in a coordinated effort, but instead just denying your opponent from playing the game while you blast them with damage. This has even led to a completely backwards playstyle for some classes. Ironically, despite having one of the strongest crowd control spells in the game, mages don't really have any Micro CC, which means spending most games blinking backwards and being a spectator, hoping their Demon Hunter will win the game. Patch 10.1 included nerfs to the duration of almost every CC in the game, which unintentionally shifted the balance in favor of Micro CC. What's the point in overextending for a 6 second polymorph while losing out on damage when your infinite mobility rogue could just gouge at almost zero damage loss? We will talk about damage in a second, but because burst DPS is so high, there isn't a need for clean setups. As long as you can just prevent someone from controlling their character, it doesn't matter how sloppy you play. Micro CC is also the reason why precog exists in the first place. With mobility creep and almost every class having an interrupt, there aren't many windows to actually cast. Watch me try and land a single Cyclone on a Demon Hunter who won't even use their kick. Between two stuns, an incap, glimpse, and shadow melt, it's not even possible to cast a single time without losing most of my HP. Because of this, most casters have the majority of their damage coming from instant cast spells. And it's no surprise that specs with the best instant cast damage are the ones who gravitate towards the S tier. The power creep of mobility and micro CC might seem where this story ends, but we're not finished yet. Weak auras has become ubiquitous in PvP starting in Shadowlands, because during the early expansion, burst damage was at its peak. With a buff to the crit modifier, players were getting one shot like never before, and even though crit damage would be nerfed in early Dragonflight, there was another dramatic shift in class design that had been boiling over in the background, as now not only was burst damage high, but now every player was taking damage at once. This was a trend that had started in Legion, class design was moving away from single target abilities in favor of damage that would automatically cleave. Classes like mages were abandoning CC altogether in order to just AoE down every player at once. Why waste time casting polymorph on the healer when you can just press arcane barrage to wipe out the whole team? Combine this with micro CC and you have a metagame based around splash damage, especially with the introduction of Evoker, whose signature ability as a mechanic borrowed directly from a raid boss. In the past, Frost DK was defined by its AoE setups, getting a huge damage spike with Pillar of Frost and then cleaving everyone down at once. But now, it feels like most classes can do the same thing. Just crank up the damage meters and toss in a few stuns and suddenly you've learned how to PvP. So now in Dragonflight, we have a metagame defined by power creep with mobility, micro CC, and AoE damage. Classes and comps that once felt unique have converged into a single win condition, which is to simply do as much damage as possible, abusing a million different modifiers to inflate the damage of a single spell. There's less of a need for precise setups and calculated play, and more often than not, the only thing that matters is how much damage you can do and how quickly you can respond to a weak aura. At the time of writing this video, one of the most dominant comps on the 3v3 ladder is Rhett Paladin, Arms Warrior, and Fistweaver Monk. It dominates with pure numbers, overwhelming healers with raw damage and micro CC. And that's mostly how the average solo shuffle game is played, since many classes simply have enough damage to kill through healing, especially during dampening. These days, balance is less about mechanics and more about numbers. How much DPS can you do and how little will you take? So how did we get to this point in class design? In WoW, there's been a growing tension between class balance and class identity. In the past, everyone was defined by unique mechanics. Rogues had their stuns, hunters had their pets, and Frosty Ks still kinda sucked. Having a unique class identity is cool and all, but it doesn't take long to realize that some mechanics are really nice to have, especially in PvP. Warriors used to be defined by Mortal Strike and were one of the few classes to actually have this mechanic, but as it turns out, reducing healing in PvP is pretty damn good. So good that these days almost every single melee in the game has Mortal Strike. And even Warlocks have it too, but it gets even more ridiculous. Demon Hunter have a Mortal Strike. Two stuns. One of them is AoE, by the way. What more? Oh yeah, an instant cast Polymorph or Cyclone, an AoE Fear, a magic dispel for some reason, and they basically have speed hacks. Demon Hunter is a pretty extreme example, but you get the point. Mechanics that were once unique are now passed around like a joint at a Snoop Dogg concert. This is known as homogenization, which causes classes to lose their identity over time in the sake of game balance. There is a private server called Project Ascension where any player can use any ability. In this game, there are no classes. Obviously, we're not at this point, but you can start to see the extreme end of homogenization. It might seem cool, but it takes away the identity of playing a unique class. The cool part about playing a rogue is being a tactician, but these days more and more specs are becoming brawlers, even sub-rogues, who at one point were topping damage with rupture all while tab-targeting to kill the entire team. 
Now, we don't want to go pointing fingers, but PvE and especially Mythic Plus were a big part of homogenization. Mythic Plus is by far the most popular game mode in Season 3, with almost 300,000 runs per day, compared to Solo Shuffle, which doesn't even scrape that amount per week. The Mythic Plus player base is almost 10 times the size of PvP, so it kind of makes sense what direction Blizzard might lean to when figuring out class design. To do big pulls in Mythic Plus, you need your group to quickly dodge mechanics, all while having enough kicks and CCs to stop multiple casts in a row. Hmm, mobility and lots of CC. This sounds familiar. Mythic Plus also has DPS checks every few minutes, with pressure points based around big pulls and boss timers, which means you need big burst damage in very specific moments, and on trash, you're going to need to spam your AoE stops while pumping out as much AoE damage as possible. Okay, so lots of CC, high mobility, cleavy burst damage. Geez, this really reminds me of something else. Oh yeah, those bosses in Mythic Plus have these big one-shots. That means every class needs to have strong defensives. And if they die without using them, well, that's their healer's fault. I wonder where I've heard this all before. We don't think it's a massive conspiracy to say PvE might have had a massive effect on class identity and class balance. Because it's no accident that the mobility and AoE damage shift we saw in Legion was a direct result of a new game mode that just happened to be released at that time, where dungeons need to be cleared as fast as possible by pulling multiple mobs at once. And now, these power creeps have fully spilled over into PvP, becoming even more amplified thanks to Solo Shuffle, a game mode where raw damage reigns supreme. The add-on problem that many people talk about wouldn't be such an issue if the game weren't so power crept. You wouldn't need 10 different alerts letting you know the enemy team popped their Giga AoE offensive. Now, here's where things get a bit touchy. There's a lot of people who enjoy Solo Shuffle for a few good reasons. Let's face it, the WoW community is getting older and some of us have busy lives. Maybe our friends have moved on from WoW and we don't want to sit in LFG. For many players, Solo Shuffle is really the only way to participate in ranked PvP. It's clear that many players want to just press play and get immediately into the action. Other players are more pessimistic, arguing that Solo Shuffle is literally killing PvP. One thing they will say is that Solo Shuffle gameplay doesn't feel like real arena. To them, Solo Shuffle is the fast food of PvP. It's addicting and gives you what you instantly want, but maybe it's not the healthiest. And right now, it's the only thing people want to eat. There is a growing sentiment that arena has started to feel more like PvE. In Solo Shuffle, where you can't really coordinate crowd control or even damage itself, it makes sense that simply cleaving the enemy team down and stopping casts like Mythic Plus would become the emerging playstyle. But this has even crept into 3v3 itself, where even a comp like RMP can just win with raw numbers. But with the convenience of Solo Shuffle, participation in other brackets has gone down dramatically. RBGs are especially dire, with daily games sometimes being less than 200. And with the potential introduction of BG Blitz as a rated mode, RBG participation could become entirely extinct in the future. Currently, arena rewards and other brackets are becoming harder and harder to get. Since participation is a big factor in MMR, less people playing means less rating inflation, and less inflation means a confusing sense of progression from season to season. Venruki recently tweeted that his Shaman is 600 rating lower than it was in Season 1, despite the fact that he feels better playing the spec. This confusing sense of progression kills motivation for many players and keeps them more attached to a single bracket. So how can we get people to play other brackets more without completely making Solo Shuffle obsolete? Hmm. Surely there has got to be a system that encourages people to participate in PvP while also attracting new players. Hmm. If there's one thing players love more than standing around Elwyn, it's looking cool while doing it. I mean, that's why we play the game, right? We know for a fact that cosmetics are highly coveted rewards for many players. And apparently, some people are willing to play Fortnite WoW Edition just to get a pirate transmog. A trading post type system specific to PvP seems like an obvious way to motivate participation in other brackets. Imagine a log that sent you to win 2v2, 3v3, or RBGs, resetting every month with new rewards. These rewards could be anything, like black market auction house containers. They could even be old elite sets, but probably reskinned. Healers could even get their own unique rewards, like bonus black market containers. Or a discount code for therapy. And a two-week vacation to get away from every demon hunter. Anything that gets more healers participating means faster queue times for everyone else. The goal is to make sure players can enjoy everything WoW has to offer by offering incentives to play multiple brackets. As long as new players have a motivating reason to engage in PvP, and as long as we can make sure everyone is trying every bracket, PvP will naturally be in a better place. With more players, there could be a greater incentive to rethink class design. We have to admit that Mythic Plus isn't going anywhere, and designers will probably prioritize it over PvP for the time being, but maybe there is a solution here too. 
Even though the talent trees were meant to be evergreen systems, maybe it's time for PvP and PvE to finally have completely different talent trees. Some classes need dramatic reworks in PvP. Frost Mage is just one example. It's suffering from button bloat, with not one, not two, but three different and easy to counter burst spells. To fix this, the entire spec would need to be rebuilt from the ground up in PvP. But instead of class tuning these days, it's more about adjusting PvP modifiers up and down. The entire philosophy behind the original PvP talent system was to make sure classes could get major reworks without affecting PvE balance and vice versa. The issues we discussed today are just one of many affecting PvPers. We could have discussed other problems too, like map bloat and the fact that there are potentially way too many arena maps these days with many weird balancing issues. When players were discussing a solo game mode three years ago, the intention was to make sure there was a way to instantly queue and get into the action. But since solo shuffle lasts six rounds, there is a slow churn of players caused by congestion, which is why queue times can last so long for DPS since you're just waiting for someone else's six rounds to end. Button bloat is its own issue and many players think that rotations are becoming too complicated. We know that PvP combat can feel engaging even with 7 abilities, but you don't even have to take things that far. Between Arena 1-2-3 macros, talent swaps, and more, it's common to have over 40 keybinds in PvP, which is quite daunting as a new player. Even though players fought back pruning during Warlords of Draenor, a bunch of new hero talents on the way could mean WoW is getting even more complicated, and could benefit from a return to more simplicity. Arena is already complicated enough, and if we want to attract new players to PvP, it shouldn't feel like you need an Adderall prescription and an encyclopedia just to play. It's always been our goal at Skillcap to make WoW PvP easier to understand for any player, and over the years we've been lucky enough to see half a million players learn something valuable in WoW Arena and reach their rating goals. But we want to know what you think. Is WoW too overwhelming these days? If so, what changes do you want to see going into the next expansion? For now, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.